Hello everybody, Lou is here and let's talk C Sharp. So today I want to talk to you guys about string manipulation. Okay, so this won't be a very long video. I won't talk all there is to talk about um, string manipulation. Um, so I'll just keep things simple. Okay, so we're going to talk about five methods um, and these are very useful methods and you, you are going to use them many times throughout this course. Okay. Uh, so hopefully you know this by now. If I ask you where the magic happens, you will know that this is where the magic happens. Happy face. Okay. So um, let's talk about string manipulation. Essentially, uh, this is just a, a fancy a, a fancy term for we're getting a string, we're getting a text, and we're manipulating it somehow to use the obvious word but we're, we're kind of doing something with it so we're essentially uh, maybe removing characters maybe maybe we are morphing it into something else so to get started let's declare a string variable and I'm gonna just call this text okay um, and my text will be something like I don't know the quick brown fox okay so that's my string I'm also going to declare another variable, let's call this result, and I'm just going to leave it as that, okay? And then we're going to do console write line result, okay? So right now, if I, if I were to run this, I would actually get an error because the result variable is unassigned, okay? So there, there are no values in here, so um, essentially I have to fix that. And we are going to fix that by doing some string manipulations. So let's start with the two upper method. So as I said, there are many methods that you can call uh, from a string. Uh, and if you wanna see what those methods are, you can essentially just grab whatever string you wanna manipulate and press a dot right after. And you're gonna see that, wow, look at these methods. There are so many. So let's start with the two upper. And the two upper method, you can, you know, you can easily scroll through this list if you want to, but I already know it's called two upper, so I'm just going to type two upper. And it's actually very easy to guess what this method does. I hope it will actually take the quick brown fox and make it all uppercase. So let's run this code and see if this is what happens. Yeah, look at that, the quick brown fox all uppercase, even though I typed all lowercase. So that's what the two upper method does. Now, if I were to use another method called two lower, it'll actually give you the same string, but all lowercase, and this is exactly what happens. Look at that, okay? So these are very straightforward and they are so useful. Um, you're you're going to see that these are especially useful when we're uh, talking about if statements. So another very useful method is the substring method. So we can do something like text.substring. And this is a very useful method as well. Uh, so it is a method. We do have to, you know, open and close these curly brackets here. But you can see that I have an error there. And that's because this method expects parameters. So let's take a look at the method definition and see what are the parameters that I have to pass. Um, so there are many options here. You can see it says one of two. This is because the substring method has a couple of overloads um, or a couple of definitions. Uh, and you're gonna see what overloaded methods are. You don't have to worry about this now, even though I just said it. Uh, but uh, essentially, I have two options, right? If I want to use this method, I can I either pass in an integer and that's going to be my start index, or my other option will be I can pass in the start index as an integer and the length, right? So what are these things? So let's talk about that. So essentially, strings are just a bunch of characters that are put together, right? So in this case here, we have something like, I'm just gonna add this comment here. So let's say we have that very sentence that we're using there. So we have the quick brown fox. Now, each one of these characters 
they have a index associated with them. And the index is nothing but an integer number that defines what position that character is on this string. So index values are zero based. So the very first character here will have index zero. So that means the letter T has an index equal to zero and H will be one and then the E will be a two. And then the space, remember the space is also a character, right? So that'll be index three and then four, five, six, and so on, right? So that's exactly how this works. So if I want to use the substring method, I have two options here, right? So the first option is to just pass in the index, the start index, right? So let's say I want to do number four, right? And if I run this, just as an example, what I'm going to get as a result is just quick brown fox. So because I started at index four, C sharp will actually only grab the part of the text that starts at position four at index four. And that's why we only have the quick brown fox here. Okay. If I were to change this and pass, um, let's say number seven and run again, I get CK Brown Fox. Okay. Um, I have another option as well. Maybe I want to pass in a start index and the length. So the length is the number of characters I want to get from that, from that text starting at position seven. So I can say maybe four and I'm going to run this again. And that's what I get. CK space B. And that actually makes sense. So if I were to continue this, so this is seven, eight, nine, I'm just going to say 10 here. So what happens here is that I'm starting at position seven, which is the C, the letter C, and I'm going, and I'm going to get four characters starting from that C. Okay. So I'm going to get one, that's the C, two, that's the K, three, that's the space. And finally, the fourth and last will be the B, which is the one that I see here on my output. Okay, so that's how the substring method works. And this is, this is going to be so useful. Now, the next method that I want to talk about, uh, there are actually a couple of them. Um, and they are, they starts with and ends with methods, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, this result variable is a string for now. I'm going to change that to a Boolean. So it's now a Boolean. And if you remember from the previous video, Booleans can accept one of two values, two possible values. So they can be either true or false. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say result equals to, and I'll say text dot starts with and you know this is also very easy to guess starts with will actually verify whether this text starts with a letter that i'm going to pass in here right so i can open and close double quotes and pass in the letter t and if this text starts with the letter t result will be true okay so let's see if that happens. Yep, there we go. So text indeed starts with the letter T. So I get true for an output. If I change this and say to B and run again, I'm going to get a false. And this actually makes sense because my sentence does start with a T. So what if I do a T lowercase and run this? There we go. I get a false and that's because this is case sensitive. All right. So what, what I mean by that is that the character lowercase T is a different character from the uppercase T. So they are separate things. Okay. Even though for humans, they may 
have the same meaning for computers you know computers don't work like that so for computers they are separate things and the same thing happens with the end with method right so if I just keep it like that and run I am getting a false and that actually makes sense because my sentence does not end with the letter T However, it does end with the letter X. So if I run this again, now I get a true. And there's something interesting about string manipulation is that I'm actually able to chain methods, right? So what is, what, what is that? What does that mean? So let's say I want to do, let's go back to my starts with method and this is a lowercase t, right? So if you remember, if I run this, I actually get a false, right? So if we want this to return true, all we have to do is chain another method here. So we have to do text dot to lower, right? So now we just don't care about casing anymore, right? So whatever we type in here, the casing won't matter because C sharp is going to grab that text and it's going to lower case everything. Okay, so everything is now lowercase. And now, if I, I run my starts with method and use a lowercase t, you can see that I actually get true. And the reason why I get this true is because I'm calling my starts with method in the result of the to lower method that is being called from the text variable. Okay. So this is how you chain methods. One last method that I want to show you guys is the contains method. So I have four options. Um, and you can see that the parameters are actually different um, for each one, right? So let's take a look here. So first I can, for the first method, I can pass a character. Second one, I can pass a string. Third one, I can pass a character and a string comparison. This is kind of, uh, kind of a yellowish green type. I don't really know what that means, so I'm just going to skip that. And same for the fourth one, because uh, we still have to talk about a couple of things before we actually get there. Uh, so let's work with the first and second overloads. Uh, same, this is actually very straightforward. All that means is that if I want to check if my text contains something, I can either pass in just a character, and let's say the letter Q as a character, okay? And if I run this, the contains is going to return true if my text contains a character lowercase q and it is actually true and it is true q from the quick right now if i don't want to use characters i can also use strings right so i can just use my double quotes for the same letter q i am going to get the same result okay so if i run this you'll see that i still get true right so in this specific case, it doesn't really matter if I'm using single quotes or double quotes if I want to check for individual letters, okay? However, maybe I want to check for the whole word. Um, so I, want, I just want to check if, I, if my text contains the word quick. And if I run this, yep, that works. I actually get true because my text actually contains the word quick. If I check for something else, say, I don't know, Bob, and I run this now, this will actually give me a false because I don't have the name Bob in my text. Uh, so that's it. That's what I had today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something new. I'll see you all next time. Cheers.